apparently, guys, yeah, I played on the PTR a little bit, but apparently there's new patch notes. Let's see what these say. Reddit Cal... <laughs> I already know what this is, guys. Something tells me that these are not going to be uh, what you think they are. So this is the Reddit council, not to be confused with the balance council. The Reddit council is probably a lot smarter, let's be honest. No. Greetings from the Reddit StarCraft 2 community balance council. It's been seven days since our exciting patch changes we <laughs> were announced. While all of you expressed total agreement with the changes, many of you rightly pointed out several sore areas of the game we forgot to address. Sorry. There are several Terran units which forgot to address, as well as entirely forgetting to post the Zerg balance changes. Furthermore, while the Protoss changes we made are a step in the right direction, there are still many holes to be filled when it comes to making Protoss, the Protoss race viable at the professional level. Without further ado, here are the patch notes. Terran changes, Marine and a Marauder. Stimpak ability reworked. Each use of Stimpak will permanently reduce the unit to maximum life by five. Jesus, dude. What is this? What is this? The American diet? Units which have used Stimpak at least once will need to use Stimpak again every 30 seconds to maintain their addiction, or the unit will immediately die. Oh, it is the American diet. Wow, what do you know? All right, developer comment. Despite being a hardcore street drug, Stimpak has had an unrealistic depiction of having incredible upsides with no downsides whatsoever. I, I mean, from a lore perspective, I guess that kind of makes sense. In order to better fit the identity of Stimpak, as well as tone down the most bullshit ability in the game by far, we have introduced some firm but fair downsides to the ability. Now, Terrans will have to use their lizard brains. Yo! Guys, how are they gonna talk to people like this? What the hell? Guys, that's just disrespectful. What do you mean true? That's not true. That's just mean. <sighs> and decide when to use Stimpak instead of instinctually spam their I win <laughs> button at any time. Okay, guys, I'm getting a little hint, maybe a little a little whiff of uh, bias from this. Anybody else smelling a little bias on this uh, patch note? The Ghost. Steady targeting aim time increased from 1.43 seconds to three seconds. Wow. Damage reduced from 130 plus 40 versus psionic to 25 <laughs> plus 25 versus light. Guys, that is, that sounds really bad. Three seconds for 50 damage? What? Units targeted by steady targeting cannot be targeted by other instances of the ability. Only one ghost can cast steady targeting on a unit at a time. EMP round shield damage reduced from 100 to 25. Units struck by EMP round are immune to the effect for 10 seconds. So your ghosts are just going to be running around half the time not doing anything. Guys, this is a... <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? Which one of you guys wrote this? Who wrote this? We need to have a talk. I don't think they're nerfing the ghost hard enough. I'm going to be honest, guys. They should also reduce the supply. They should make it three supply. They should reduce the auto attack. And also, they should uh, nerf the attack range as well. I think it's a little bit too far. <clears throat> Developer comment, at long last, the stupidest, most absurd, bullshit, dumbass unit in the game has been addressed. Okay, no longer will Terran players have a get out of jail free card when losing a match. <laughs> the ghost has, lo lo has long been known as the penultimate 
hard counter to everything Zerg and Protoss. With the steady targeting changes, Terran need to check their privilege instead of dragging... What? They need to check their privilege? What, guys, what are we talking about here? Guys, this is fucking... Guys, I'm not gonna lie, man. This is sounding kind of racist at this point, man. Terran privilege? Okay, guys, stop. Instead of dragging their mouse across the screen and killing thousands upon thousands in resources of Zerg units, the MP round nerfs aim to address the absurd damage the ability deals to Protoss armies as well as brainless spamming of the ability through a brief immunity period to struck units. We will be closely monitoring ghosts for any further nerfs they may need. I don't think they would have to ner worry about nerfing them again. I don't think they'd have to worry about that, guys. I don't think there's... I don't think we need to monitor them after this change, guys. I mean... I'm not gonna lie, guys. Where, where it said... The pen ultimate hard counter to everything Zerg and Protoss. For some reason, that actually rang true a little bit. Because that's what I said. I, said. I actually feel like it having snipe and EMP in one unit... It does make your unit your army complexity a little bit more simple, you know? All right, here we go. Orbital Command is next. Oh boy. Call down, mule ability removed from the game. What was this patch made in 2010, dude? What the hell? <clears throat> Many Redditors expressed concern with our last round of nerfs for the mule. They rightfully pointed out that the changes would not be enough to bring the mule in line with the macro mechanics of the other races. We feel this may not be possible as the mule is busted as fuck by design. Guys, something tells me a professional game dev didn't write this. Something tells me. Therefore, we have decided to simply remove remove the mule from the game. Get fucked. What the hell? The game dev is just being honest. Finally, Zerg changes. Here we go. Queen anti ground weapon range increased from five to seven. What the anti ground weapon damage increased from four to four plus 12 versus versus Hellions. What the hell? Guys, I've seen plus damage to armor type. Hell, I've seen plus damage to unit type, okay? But I've never seen it to a specific unit. Plus 12 versus Hellions? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Zerg players are forced to rely on Queens for their early and mid game defense against Terrans. Queens also suffer from low attack range versus ground units and can struggle to deal with Hellions quick enough to prevent drone losses. Our aim here is to ensure Zerg players no longer suffer unnecessary drone losses to Ter Terran Hellions. We will be closely monitoring these changes to ensure that they do not adversely affect ZVZ or ZVP. Oh, thank goodness. We definitely don't want it messing up the other matchups. Because obviously it's not going to have that much of an effect on TVZ. Hydralisk supply cost reduced from 2 to 1. Hydralisk den build requirement change from layer to spawning pool. You know, uh, people have actually... Guys, this is one that people have actually asked for in the past. I remember this one. People have requested this before. That's crazy, though. Guys, I'm sure nobody will use it to rush. Definitely not. They definitely won't use it for cheeses. Developer comment, Hydralis are one of the coolest units in the game that aren't Protoss. <laughs> Lots of Redditors feel this way, so we thought making Hydralisks available at Hatchery Tech would be cool. Okay. Is that it? They thought it would be cool? They thought it would be cool? It's not a, it has nothing to do with balance? 
has nothing to do with, you know, solving a problem. They just thought it would be cool. Oh, there you go. Why not? The Ultralisk. While moving, the Ultralisk is now able to push small enemy units such as Marines and Marauders. Moving enemy units in this way deals 50 trample damage <laughs> per second. So if your Marines are stimmed, they're dead instantly. Shields will negate this damage. Okay, dude. What? So you just so you just move command your ultras through your opponent's bio army and it kills everything. We feel that Zerg's tier three unit options are very lackluster. Unfortunately, Cyril is just so good at the game due to being the confirmed goat that he makes ultralisks look good when they suck dick. What, dude? Guys, who the fuck wrote this? Guys, yo, can we get some professionalism up in here? What is going on? My god. With these changes, Ultralisks will now have somewhat of a fighting chance against Terran Bio. Ultralisks are supposed to be the hard counter to Bio, and as such, Bio should have absolutely no chance against them. With shielded units being immune to trample, we ensure this ability will not affect the sacred and best matchup of PVZ. Is that true? Are ultras a confirmed counter? Let me see. Let's go to the help. Uh, how do I check the units? Uh, Zerg units. Here we go. Ultralisk. Strong against... Hatchery. Layer and hive. The hatchery layer and hive now emit a mystical spore cloud that grants itself and nearby units immunity to. <laughs> to nuke damage. What the fuck is this, dude? What do you mean, makes sense? How does this make sense? Oh, bro, guys, almost the only use for nuke is to nuke mineral lines. It's almost never used for anything else. Guys, why would... <laughs> why does this make sense? <sighs> Developer comment, I think we can all agree that nukes are one of the most boring things in the game. I mean, I thought people liked nukes. Click once and it forces the opponent to have to scramble to find the strike zone and move units all in a matter of moments. With these changes, Zergs will have a slightly better chance at dealing with nukes. Slightly better? <laughs> they don't even have to deal with them. <laughs> just, just make sure all your units are next to a hatchery or a hive. Zergs will, um, they'll have a better chance at dealing with nukes. Losing drones to Terran is dumb and just shouldn't happen. Uh, how is that based, Soda Quackers? All right, let's, uh, look at the Protoss changes. Okay, here we go. Stalkers no longer have to research Blink. It is now a baseline ability. I mean, that's, like, already GG, isn't it? Like, you can't lose ever again. I feel like I feel like that would be insane, wouldn't it? We could I feel like we could just stop at that change and that's like that's such a big change. A uh, new research available at the Twilight Council phase reactor. Casting blink causes the stalker to regenerate 50% of its maximum life and shields over 3 seconds. That's fucking insane. <laughs> uh, stalkers are one of the core units of the Protoss gameplay experience because the blink ability is so essential to the stalkers effectiveness. Having to research the ability feels bad. Instead of limiting the skill level of the player, we have decided to make blink a baseline ability. This way, Protoss players will have more chances to show their iconic mechanical skill from the beginning of the game. <laughs> With the addition of a new upgrade, Stalkers will be able to recover a small... Oh, guys, it's only 50%. Guys, it's only 50%, guys. It's a small amount of life and shields. 
We hope this will promote more hit and run style gameplay from the Protoss and Taro Tassadar. Bro, that, they're, they're even pledging allegiance to fucking Protoss in the patch notes. Bro, he said in Taro Tassadar. What the hell? I feel, guys, I feel like balance devs should be unbiased, personally. All right, the Photon Cannon, new upgrade at the Forge, Enhanced Ordinance. Grants Photon Cannons splash damage. Requires Robotics Bay. Honestly, this is like the only change where it's like, depends on how good the splash damage is, but it's like, this is the only change that kind of sounds like they, they, you know, it could make it into the game somehow. You know, I'm not saying it would, but maybe. Photon cannons can be powerful defensive tools in the early game. However, during the late game, they become obsolete. Protoss players are sometimes forced to build a dozen cannons just to defend an expansion. With this new upgrade, photon cannons will retain some level of usefulness in the late game against bullshit Terran split bushes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, God forbid the Terran splits their army. War Prism cost increased from 250-0 to 250-100. Oh, a nerf! They finally nerfed something from a race that's not Terran. Holy crap, guys. That's insane. They actually nerfed the War Prism. Units warped in via the War Prism are all warped in 100% faster and incur 50% of the... 50% of the normal unit cost, really? Guy, that's just dumb. I take it back, it's not a nerf, it's like the most insane buff I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> While the War Prism can be a powerful harassment tool at times, it can also feel punishing to use. Huh? Units are vulnerable when warping in, especially inside or near the enemy base. Additionally, investing resources into harassment can be a big risk. With these changes, we hope to alleviate the punishing, oftentimes high risk gameplay of the warp prism. All right, here we go, the Forge. All levels of ground weapon, armor, and shield upgrades have had their research times reduced by 50%. Seems reasonable. That seems like a, uh, that seems like a completely reasonable amount. 50%, wow. For the entirety of the game's lifespan, Protoss has suffered with having the longest unit upgrade times of any race. In order to compensate, we have reduced research times for these upgrades by 50% across the board. We realize this might be slightly too strong. However, we consider this to be reparations <laughs> for being the weakest race for over a decade. Fuck you Terrans, get fucked. What? Guys, this is, uh, guys, this is uncalled for. I'm not gonna lie, I wanna see if a diamond player could beat Clem on this patch. <laughs> they might be able to.